Hey, y'all. Um, I'm really excited to be here. My in-laws all live in Nashville, and most of them went to Lipscomb University. So even though I didn't go here, I married into a bison family and definitely feel like I'm a bison fan at this point. Um, I am now 28 years old, but eight years ago, I was sitting basically in the same seat that a lot of you are. I was a 21-year-old, I was about to graduate from college, and I had absolutely no clue what I was supposed to do with my life. I didn't know what job I wanted to have, I knew certain gifts and talents God had given me, but they didn't really make sense in the workforce, and I needed time to figure out what it was I was supposed to do. Now, I had grown up in the mountains of Western North Carolina, and I had heard about this thing called the Appalachian Trail. And I didn't know much about it, but I knew it was 2,180 miles long. It goes through 14 separate states, and I knew that if you wanted to hike the entire trail all at once, that typically it took between four and six months. So I thought to myself, perfect. That's just enough time for me to figure out what it is I'm supposed to do with my life. So I graduated from college in December, and that following March, I started out on my own on the Appalachian Trail. The problem was I didn't have any backpacking experience. But hey, I didn't think that was a problem because I had been an athlete my whole life, and I had gone on day hikes, and I had all my brother's old Boy Scout gear, so who needed experience, right? I mean, the Appalachian Trail was going to be fun. It was going to be an adventure, and hey, it was just walking, so it was going to be easy, right? Well, starting out in March, I realized very early on that it was not going to be easy. Hiking up and down mountains all day long with a 30-pound pack on your fat back and blisters on your feet is very difficult. To add to that, the trail in March in the mountains of North Georgia is freezing cold. And almost every other day, there'd be snow flurries, and I wasn't accustomed to sleeping outside in freezing weather. And it was so tough. I realized within the first two weeks that this was going to be the most difficult thing I had ever done in my entire life. And I remember very specifically, two weeks into the trip, waking up in my tent one morning and hearing the sound of cold rain outside. And cold rain is the worst. It's worse than the snow flurries, because snow will bounce off you, but rain just saturates you. It saturates you, it saturates your tent, it makes your pack twice as heavy. And the last thing I wanted to do that morning was crawl out of my tent and start walking in the rain. But they have this saying on the Appalachian Trail that goes, no rain, no Maine. That means if you don't hike in the rain, you don't make it to Maine. So in my head, I thought, no rain, no Maine, no rain, no Maine, and okay, I'm ready. I crawled out of my tent, I packed everything up, I started walking, but I was just dragging my feet, and I got hungry, so I pulled out an energy bar, but it was so cold that the energy bar was frozen solid. I couldn't bite into it, so I just started licking it, so there I was walking down the trail, licking my energy bar. And later that day, the cold, drizzly rain actually turned into a lightning and thunderstorm. And this was my first lightning and thunderstorm on the trail, and I was terrified because all of a sudden I realized there's metal in my hiking poles, there's metal in my packs. What am I gonna do? Well, thankfully, along the AT, there are shelters. They're not glamorous. They're basically three-sided wooden buildings, but they have a tin roof, and they'll keep you dry and safe in a storm. So at that point, I start running up the trail as quickly as I can to get to the next shelter. I make it. It's packed full of hikers, but they're all male hikers, and they decide to make a small space in the middle for a poor, wet, pathetic female, and I think, I'll take it. You know, I'm safe. So I take off my pack and I dig inside and I bring out a trash bag that has 
my one set of dry clothes that I can wear at night, and then I go around to the back of the shelter where I can change in privacy. So I'm back behind the shelter, and I'm hugging up against this thin strip of roof, trying to stay dry, and as I'm taking off a wet top off my body and reaching my hands towards the sky, a lightning bolt actually hits the roof of the shelter and then goes through my body to the ground. I was struck by lightning. Being struck by lightning really hurts. But I will say there are two advantages to being struck by lightning. One is you don't know it's going to happen, and two, it happens very quickly. So literally, by the time I could figure out what had just occurred, the pain had already left my body. But I was still terrified, and so immediately I did an inventory. Okay, I can wiggle my toes. I still got 10 fingers. I took a deep breath. And at that point, instead of being worried, I thought to myself, cool, you know? I was 21, and I really didn't know any better. And so instead of being worried about heart arrhythmia or instead of seeking immediate medical attention, I thought to myself, well, gosh, maybe I'll get a blonde streak in my hair or different colored eyes or the gift of telepathy. I wasn't sure, but I was not deterred. And the next day, I just kept hiking. Now, a week later, I made it to the Smoky Mountain National Park, and I was so excited to be there because my whole life I had heard about how beautiful the Smokies are. It's the most visited national park in the entire country. But the entire time I was in the park, it was like walking through a cloud. It was gray, it was misty, it was either raining or spitting rain the entire time. And my last night in the park, I was staying at Tri-Corner Knob Shelter, which is about 6,000 feet above sea level. And I remember going to sleep that night, listening to the rain hit the tin roof and shivering in my sleeping bag. And the next morning, I woke up, and the first thought that went through my head was, thank you, God, I don't hear rain on the shelter roof anymore. It must have stopped. But then I looked outside, and what did I see? Snow. There were six inches of snow on the ground, and it was coming down in blizzard-like conditions. And I was terrified, and all of a sudden I remembered these newspaper articles that come out every spring talking about the hikers that have to get rescued out of the Smokies. And I thought, my mother is going to kill me. I have got to get out of here. And so I look for my shoes, and I find them, and the laces are covered in ice, so I slip them on, and I throw on my pack, and I start hiking as quickly as I can to try to get out of the Smokies. And I know, based on my guidebook, that from that point, I have 18 miles almost entirely downhill to get out of the park and get to a road where there's a hiker hostel, and I knew I would be safe there. So I was going as quickly as I could, and thankfully, most of the time, the trail stayed within the forest. So I was somewhat protected from the wind and the sleet and the snow coming down. But at one point, the trail left the forest and went onto a long, exposed ridge line. And as soon as I left the tree cover, I felt the wind and the snow hit my face, and it burned. And I had to duck my head and close my eye and walk as quickly as I could to get back into tree cover. But then when I made it there, I immediately lifted my head, and I couldn't open my eye. It had frozen shut. And I had to stand there and pick icicles off of my eyelashes and wipe frozen crusts out of the corner of my eye until I could once again open it, regain my sight, and keep hiking down the mountain. <laughs> 